Hello, I'm Hector Perez from Dev School. Welcome to this new graphical interface challenge video in which we will replicate this design that you can find in Drill in a .NET MAUI application. This design was created by Katarina Facundes Coutinho and it is the graphical interface challenge we're going to carry out today. Before starting the video, I invite you to visit courses.devs.school if you want to learn about development with .NET MAUI, where you will find specialized training about .NET MAUI, among other technologies. Now, let's get started. Let's start with this challenge. For this, I have already created a project called Fruit Demo, in which we will start doing different things to achieve the graphical interface challenge. The first thing we will do is import some application fonts since we have to change the default font to comply with this style that we see in the dribble design. For this, I have selected a font called Roboto. I will import this font as part of the project in the resources folder, specifically in the fonts folder. The fonts we will use for this challenge are Roboto Vault and Roboto Regular. Once we have imported them, we will go to the maui-program.cs file. Let's register them. We can copy one of these lines. I will make the font a little bigger and we will indicate that the font name is Roboto Regular. The first of them, we can give it an alias, for example, Regular. I will duplicate this line and change the name to Roboto Bold and the alias to Bold. Now that we have these fonts, we also need to import the image that we will use as part of this challenge, which is the background papaya image. Here I have found a papaya in the Google search. You can find another fruit or a similar papaya if you need or want it. I'm going to import this image. I've already imported it. It's this image called papaya.png that has no background. It's this image that you can see on the screen. It's an image I found on the internet. Once we have imported the necessary resources for the application development, I will go to the app.xaml.cs file. I'm going to change the initial page. Instead of being app shell, it will be main page. We will work with this content page that is created by default since it is a very simple graphical interface. So it will be the page we will use. I will close the file and open the main page.xaml file. I will remove this default code, that is, the entire scroll view. And also in the code behind, I will remove the event handler and this field. With this, we can now start the application to see the changes in real time as we make them. We already have the blank screen here. Let's go to the main page.xaml file and what I'm going to do is change the background color. If we go back to the design on Dribble, you can notice that the image has a gradient that is not very noticeable, but it has two different colors. A first color at the top, this color that we see here, and a second color that is slightly darker at the bottom. Let's apply this design first. For this, we will indicate content page. We want to create a linear gradient brush background with an endpoint equal to 0.1 for a top down gradient. We will define a first gradient stop with an offset equal to 0.1, which will be the top color. We will specify that the color will be equal to FFCC33, which is the top color. We will duplicate this line, indicate that the offset will be equal to 1.0 and the color will be equal to FCBC03. With this change, we now have the gradient as the background of our content page. Once we have done this, we will begin to define the content of the content page. First, we will identify the different spaces for each of the elements on the page. We can see that we need a first space for this fruit title and the amount of the fruit. We need a second space to define this blank space where we can see the fruit we are analyzing. And we also need a third space for this container of the fruit's nutrients information. For this, 
we will indicate that we need a grid type element with a margin equal to 25 to leave spacing from the edge of the content page. We will also define row definitions, indicating that the first row will be equal to 20%, the second row will have 40% of space, and the last row 40% of space. Each row defines each of the elements I explained earlier. Within this grid, we will use the background image, indicating that we want a row span since we want to use all the available space of this grid. We indicate grid.rowspan equal to 3, horizontal options equal to center to center the image, source equal to papaya.png, which was the image we imported earlier, and vertical options equal to center. With these settings, we can see the fruit centered in the emulator. The next step is to establish this pair of elements of the title of the fruit we are analyzing. As part of this grid, after the image, we will define a vertical stack layout, since we have this pair of text aligned vertically. We will indicate that we want a first label control with a font family equal to regular, which was the font we imported earlier, with a size equal to 45, horizontal options equal to center, and a text that says papaya in uppercase. We can duplicate this label control, change some elements such as leaving a margin for the separation of the title and the specification of the number of grams, margin equal to 0, 15, 0, 0, font attributes equal to bold. We will indicate that the font family will be equal to bold, another font we imported earlier, the font size will be equal to 20, horizontal options equal to center, and the text equal to 100 grams. Now, you can notice that in the dribble design, all the text of this design is white, so we will define as part of the application resources that all the text is white, so we do not have to place a white control for each of the elements. We can do this by going to the solution explorer, opening the resources folder, and then the styles folder, and finally the styles file. We can search for the style definition for the label control. We will change the text color property so that it always has a white color, whether the device has a dark theme or a light theme. We save the changes. We return to the application and indeed, we now have this text in white color. The next step is to define this section of the fruit components. To do this, we stop the application execution and go to the Solutions Nougat Package Manager, searching for the term Acrylic. This gives us a set of results from different packages, many of them focused on xamarin.forms. We are interested in this package called AcrylicView.maui, which I analyzed in a previous video, which you can watch as part of the cards in this video. We can install this Nougat package as part of the project. We click on install and now we have the package installed. To use this package, we have to go to magwiprogram.cs and as part of the builder, add an extension method called use acrylic view. This imports the necessary namespace and with this, we can now use this component. We return to the main page.xaml file. We will go to the top to define a namespace called acrylic, which is equal to CLR namespace and look for the term acrylic. We have to use this namespace from xe.acrylicView. This creates the namespace correctly. Once we have defined the namespace, we will go to the bottom after the vertical stack layout. We will use the namespace we defined earlier, which is acrylic, which contains the acrylic view control. We position it in row number 2 and specify some properties, such as the corner radius equal to 20. If we save the changes at this point, we already have the acrylic component here. You can see that this section of the papaya is slightly blurred, however, the component is not clearly visible as part of the graphical interface. We will make some modifications to fix this. 
we will indicate some properties, such as wanting an effect style equal to custom. We will also indicate that we want to center the component vertically, and we will apply a tint color to make the blur more noticeable or look better. We will do this through tint color equal to, we will use the color FCE7A7. This color is not very noticeable yet since we have to use tint color along with tint opacity. We will set a value of 0.2 and with this you can now see this blurred section much better. The next step is to add the content. Here is something to highlight. You can appreciate that in the design we have certain components that are part of this fruit. But what if we wanted to have a call, for example, a database in which we consulted information from different fruits? And it could be the case that some fruits had certain vitamins or certain components and other fruits had fewer components or more components. What I want to get at is that this part needs to be dynamic. To do this, I will define a model. I go to the project, create a new folder called models, Inside the models folder, I will create a new class called fruit information. I will make this class a public class. The first property will be of type string and will be called micronutrient. The second property will be of type integer and will be called percentage with its get and set each. Once I have this class ready, I will return to the code behind of this page. As part of the class, I will create a new public list with a generic fruit information, which was the class we created earlier. It will be called, for example, papaya info, with its get and set. The purpose is to somehow bind this list to the graphical interface. We will see this a little later. After the initialize component method, we have to fill in the information for papaya info. We indicate papaya info is equal to a new list of fruit info. We create a new instance here and can start filling in the information for this list. I have previously prepared a code snippet to do this, which is this code that you can see on the screen. We are creating a new list of fruit information and simply creating a set of fruit information instances with a micronutrient and its corresponding percentage. This is the number of elements that could vary according to each fruit. Finally, after creating this list, we will indicate this dot binding context set to this so that we can use this list from the graphical interface. The next thing we're going to do is analyze how we could replicate this section that we see at the bottom of the application. Something we could do, as I mentioned earlier, is to create a grid and define each of the spaces through rows and columns to add each of the text elements. However, this would not be the most optimal, since if we had more elements, we would have to create more rows and more columns. Here, the ideal is to use some type of layout that allows us to add elements as we need them. One layout we could use is a vertical stack layout, with each of these elements being an element of a vertical stack layout. That is, each of the rows would be an element of a vertical stack layout, and somehow we could design the vertical stack layout to have a space on the left. Or we could have two columns, the first column for the labels of the components. The second column to specify the percentage of that component. Fortunately, we can achieve this with Don and Maui through bindable layouts. Inside the acrylic view, we indicate that we want to define a vertical stack layout. Within the vertical stack layout, we assign some properties such as padding equal to 35, vertical options equal to center to center the content. We can use a property called bindable layout.itemSource to specify that the information to fill the vertical stack layout will be consumed from a list. We can do this through a normal binding. We will bind to papaya info, which is the list we have previously defined in the code behind. Once we have created this bind from the vertical stack layout, we must define the visual appearance for the elements of each of the vertical stack layout elements. We will use a property called bindable layout.itemTemplate, 
that will allow us to do precisely this. Define a data template and within it the design we want for the elements of the vertical stack layout. First, I am interested in a grid element with a margin equal to 0, 10, 0, 0. We will define a set of columns through column definitions. Point 0.6 asterisks to assign 60% of space to the first column and 40% for the second column. The purpose of this grid is to have more elements as part of the vertical stack layout. Finally, we will define the elements of the grid, which will be a pair of label elements. We assign their font family equal to bold, we will indicate a font size equal to 20, and a text equal to binding micronutrient. This is to bind the micronutrient property as part of this label. I will start running the application to see how this looks. And now we can see the first column with each of the components of this fruit. Let's go back to the XAML code. We will define a second label control. We will position this label in column number 1. Assign a font family equal to regular. Also a font size equal to 20. Horizontal text alignment equal to end. Since if we go back to the design, you can see that each of the percentages is on the right side. And finally, we will indicate a text equal to binding the percentage property. We will apply a string format equal to single quotes, curly braces, at a zero to indicate that this is the position for the percentage. Next, we will add a percentage symbol to have this syntax. This format rather as part of the graphical interface. We will save the changes. There is an error here. We need to close this tag. We save the changes and you can now see the percentage on the right side. So this is how we have replicated the design in .NET MAUI. I think this design turned out quite well. I will put side by side both the design and the resulting application and I think it turned out quite well. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you liked it, I invite you to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click on the bell so that you receive notifications as soon as I upload new graphical interface challenges or when I upload content related to .NET. See you in the next video.